So one of the cool new things in iNav 7.1 is that you don't need a magnetometer with your GPS unit to have navigation modes and return to home. So that's very similar to how Betaflight is. You don't need a magnetometer on that GPS unit. However, Betaflight yet doesn't have the altitude hold and position hold features that iNav does. But let's check out, see what iNav has to offer for all those quads out there that don't have a magnetometer GPS. They have kind of the smaller GPS units maybe you're using for beta flight and how you can use that now with iNav and get some additional benefit, you know, some little altitude hold, position hold stuff. And, but, you know, let's see how it works. See if it works well. You know, how does it do that without a magnetometer? How does it do position hold? How, how does it do altitude hold? Um, and how well does it work? Engines armed. Okay, so one of the first things you'll notice when you do have a magnetometer and you have your uh, heading on and you have your uh, course heading, they're gonna uh, match right on arming. So keep a look at those numbers and you'll see here as we get going how uh, those numbers will stay aligned uh, pretty well, pretty well. Uh, the course heading is being set by the GPS unit, uh, whereas the magnetometer is the other one. And you can see here after, after I get moving, uh, they don't perfectly match, but Minus they kind of catch up with each other. The other thing with when you have a magnetometer on, let's check out what, how we do for position hold. So we'll just cruise forward here position and hold. throw it into position hold. You can see what we're getting, and it's pretty breezy. You can probably hear it uh, right now. Uh, so that's why you see the, the shimmying and shaking there. And what I have set up on here is that I can move in position hold with cruise mode. So I'm going to go ahead forward and cruise and then pull up and let, let it sit. And then, you know, that should adjust. I can go different directions, so maybe follow this path. And you can see what we're getting there with a magnetometer set up on the unit. You can see right there. And just pull up. I can go right. And I'm not adjusting the altitude or anything like that. I'm just kind of making, it's almost like a DJI drone, right? Point and just push forward. As I'm pushing forward, it will catch to its cruise speed, which is around 14 miles an hour. And then it will, if I let go, it will go ahead and break there. So you can see what you're kind of getting with a magnetometer. So let's get this in manual mode and then see what we get for return to home. Take this out a little bit. say here and just flip it into return to home and she will come on back you can kind of see I took off right here in the middle of this path in front of me you can kind of see it coming down honestly perfectly right in this path right in front of me. So there you go, that's with a magnetometer, uh, uh, behavior you can expect in iLab. Let's turn off the magnetometer and see what we get after that. So to adjust the magnetometer settings, we're gonna be here in the configuration tab. Now, if you don't have a magnetometer by default, this would be set to none because the auto won't detect anything. To set up your modes, you won't see the navigation modes in here. So you'll have to, for now, in this release uh, 7.1, set this to fake hit save and reboot, and then you can set up your navigation modes. And then when you're done with that, I think you have to set this back to none. At least that's what the documentation says for now. So I'm gonna go, I already have my modes already set up. I'm gonna go ahead and just send this to zero to none here. So that will effectively turn off my magnetometer. So now after save and reboot, you can see here, I and the magnetometer on this quad is on the GPS unit. You can see I have GPS barrel, which are power, you know, barrels on the flight controller, GPS is powered up on the five volt rail with the USB connection. So I have my GPS unit here. It's just my magnetometer is set to none uh, and everything works normal here. You can still see in the modes tab, I can still see all my modes right there. So I should be in good shape. One of the first things you'll notice with having the magnetometer off is that the heading up top where the course heading and the magnetometer heading are blank when you first arm. And then as you move forward, you can see they start to activate. And really your magnetometer heading is taking cues from your course heading, which is being determined by your GPS unit itself. So let's then check out how we get, once those two are, you know, once you fly forward for a while and let it kind of get acclimated to that, you might want to fly a couple different directions. 
Uh, depends how, I don't know that you have to necessarily. I think it just needs to first pick up a course heading here. But you can see I flipped back and forth a little bit there. And uh, once that's aligned, then you can just check out some of your things like position hold. So you can see here, position hold. Let's go down a little bit. So you can see the roadway. You can see your position hold. And again, it's a little windy, but yeah, no magnetometer and you know, position hold is pretty good. Now, one of the things I do notice though, is if you go to use cruise mode and go forward, see how it's a little off. It's not too bad though, but it's a little off. So you're, you know, navigating while you're um, in a position hold might be a little sketch. You can see here it kind of goes to the left a little bit. And I haven't changed headings yet. So that will even change a little bit even more if I kind of flip around and then go a heading here. Let's see, yeah, it's not too bad, I, I guess. Uh, let's do that before. Again, you can hear that wind. So let's change heading this way. Maybe go to the right. See what that does. That works pretty well too. Not too bad. And a little DB warning. So not too bad, honestly. Uh, even with you know no magnetometer here and you know it's you've got most of your navigation mode benefits right there and you can kind of see it works pretty well and pull up and then it does its thing of course we would be remiss without trying out the whole return to home we're gonna go ahead and activate that see how that goes a little more wonky see that there it's a little a little different, but it uh, it gets there. And the poop is going to be in the pudding as it pulls up to here. As before, it kind of stops. And then let's pull this down. You can see, it's coming down. Now, the accuracy of where it's coming down is not really that critical. That can be off, even if I had the mag on. But man, it does pretty good. Look at that as it settles right in right in the middle of the path there. So you may think, well, it's probably just better to have a magnetometer, and that is what the documentation says. And I, of course, don't disagree with the documentation, but you could run up against things where you get better GPS performance on a five inch quad with having the magnetometer off than you do with it on. And the reason that could be is because you're not gonna get magnetic interference by the magnetometer. And to expand on that further, if you have a lot of experience with magnetometers, you know they need to be recalibrated every now and then. So that's another piece to the puzzle that you won't need to worry about because there's no magnetometer. It's really getting all its heading data right from the GPS unit itself. It does make even more importance, not that it's not important at all, either way, that your HDOP has a good enough accuracy. Well, I find for this quad specifically, anything like below a 1.5 is pretty good. Once it goes above a 1.5, like 1.7, 1.9, it's sketchy no matter if I have a magnetometer on or off, just the accuracy of my GPS lock is not really great at that point, and it doesn't fly. You know, we'll do return to home, but it's, it's, not, it's not pretty. So I think it's a really exciting new feature to open the door for, you know, not having to deal with magnetometer garbage anymore. And also things like this, this is my GEP RC drone. I had to actually stick another magnetometer, another GPS unit on the back here with a magnetometer to use it because the one it comes with doesn't have one. It's kind of made for beta flight, but I'm gonna, I already have this switched over to iNav. I'm gonna be able to switch that back now, use this GPS unit without a magnetometer. Don't have to worry or deal with a magnetometer and get all the goodness of iNav, position hold, altitude hold, things like that. And using this little long range quad. And finally, Betaflight is working on altitude hold and hopefully position hold for Betaflight 4.6. You can see this pull request right here. Um, this is CTZ Snooze, Chris Thompson working on it. He has a little video of it out there. Um, it's worth a good read if you're interested in what the progress is on that. It was created three weeks ago. So it's this is very much uh, happening right now. And this is actually code that you can fly. So if you go down to here, you'd have to read all through it. You can actually use the cloud build system to build this commit and add this custom define.
So that would look like this in the configurator where you'd put that pull request number right here for the pull request or commit. And then you'd put this custom define out underscore hold underscore mode in there as well. Of course, you'd have to have expert mode, show all releases, development, and then pick your flight controller, uh, whichever you're flashing that to, and then uh, the beta flight latest release, the dev release there. And it will actually, it's really not going to use this. It's going to use this commit and this custom define. And then when you go ahead and hit uh, create firmware online, it will go ahead and build that. You can see I already did it here, but it would build that custom for your uh, flight controller uh, target, whichever one you selected there. As always, uh, that's really for people that are interested in being on the cutting edge and testing. So do not just flash this up if you're, you know, it'd be for testing and you'd put your information back in that pull request. But as you can see on there, beta flight is actively working on altitude hold. And I'm sure we're gonna move right into position hold here as well. And then we'll have a bunch of options uh, I would think they're going to also have it with a magnetometer on or off. We'll see. I'm sure by default it's going to be off at this point. Really, altitude hold doesn't really deal with the magnetometer stuff. So they're they're not even at the position hold part yet. So we'll see what that's going to be. That will do it for this one. Put any questions or comments you might have down below. Thanks, everybody. And I hope this helped.